because what Talu and I were talking about, and I think this is probably a good idea for today, is is that uh, there's not a lot of materials for Tupi. Like if you want to study stuff, like you can't just listen to a song in Tupi. But now that we have AI, some people have been making materials in Tupi. Um, and so here I've pasted into the chat. You guys can look at it. I'll try to not share my, ah, I'll have to share my screen at some point. But here's here are the lyrics for you to reference when you want. So these lyrics were written by Anshieta himself. They're from his uh, poemas. And it's a song about something. And maybe just based on looking at it, you can guess some of the words, or maybe you can't. Uh, yeah, the you can just assume it, it has a religious subject, right? And so uh, one of our colleagues in the Tupi, CVP Tupi group, uh, took these lyrics and put them into the uh, AI song generator that recently came out. And it gave us a pretty good song. Like I've listened to it a lot and I actually memorized it. So now because we were able to AI generate that song, I was able to use the fact that it was a catchy song to memorize the lyrics. And so did Mateos. And we both memorized the lyrics. And now someone else is memorizing the lyrics because this song is catchy. So it's it's taking these old lyrics from the 1500s religious song and putting it to like a beat. It kind of makes it like an indie Christian rock kind of sounding vibe. It's kind of funny. So uh, <laughs> Switchfoot or something like that. I don't know. Pitangi uh, Paiesu. So... I thought it would be fun. I guess since it's your first day back to go light, um, I guess it's not going to be light. There's going to be a lot of stuff in here, but it'll it'll be a day of exposure. I'm going to expose you more to the language from examples because uh, hitherto, fancy English word for you. Does anyone know what that means? Hitherto, I have only showed you grammatical examples that I made up in my grammar. I haven't showed you actual poems and stuff, right? I haven't actually showed you the language in use. Hitherto means up until this point in time. Up until now. It's an old word. Um, I was talking about Nietzsche earlier today because he referenced a Leipzig out accent. And I was like, what's a Leipzig out accent? Only, only if you know German can you read some of these philosophers and understand what they're saying. And I remember in that same translation was the day I learned that word in English hitherto because they use that. And I, was, I had to I had to pull out a dictionary and be like, what the fuck is a hitherto? It's the most uh, British, old, ye, scallywag sort of shit I've ever heard. But it was uh, ever since ever since then I've used it, you know, in my vocabulary because it's fun. All right, let's jump into the song. So I'm going to play it for you on my phone. Let me know if you guys can hear it. Um, and we'll listen to it uh, once, maybe twice. It's like a minute long. Um, and because if I play it on my computer, unfortunately, for some reason, it's not uh, audible. I think it just does that. So I'm gonna try and play it into like the the microphone here. Let me let me know if it works. Um, I'll sing to Naso Potari Mamo De Puri Guite Cobone Ubaca Suye de Ud She Anga Pusuro Sape Enga Tu Shepu Ape Good, huh? That's some That's some good stuff, I would say. The AI did a really good job and it and it even pronounced it. It pronounced things fairly well. Like maybe there's a few little things that I would be like, nah, maybe it wasn't so nasal. But when you're singing, you have some liberty with that kind of stuff. 
right? Uh, like I British people sound American. That. Do you have to give it the phonetic transcription or just like? No, you you, you give it like it, I think it learns based on natural language. So we kind of like. We put it, this is it with like the raw lyrics in, but I know that Emerson, the guy who generated this, I shared the link for you guys uh, if you want to listen to it in your own time. But um, he's been, he's been like spending his days, like, because you get five free credits a day. He's been spending his days on the five songs, like tweaking the symbols that he uses and trying to use it like a, an eye with a frowny face instead of a squid, like, so he's been sending some songs that have been sounding pretty accurate like these days, but his like orthography is ridiculous you know it's crazy um so <laughs> now that we heard the song uh let's go ahead and dissect it piece by piece so the first line ore rao suba yepe ore rao suba yepe ore rao suba yepe uh what does that mean, Gustavo? Can you can you uh, guess what that means, or do you already know? You've you've already done the conjugation quiz quite a bit. Well, for it also so yep. My cat is probably facing camera right now. My cat is probably trying to spray my camera right now. That's fine. but yeah, um, it's. Oh my god, is the second person plural. I am a bit lost right now, but also it's um is it love, right? Yeah, um, suba. It also. Yeah, shit. Sub is love. Al sub is love. Correct. Yeah. Also, so um, I'd probably say, but it's something. Like your love of us. Um, orera o suba yepe. That's pretty good. That's a that's a really good guess. All right, let's go ahead and let me share my screen with you. Um, uh, all right, we're all seeing this, yeah. Oh wait, hang on. I gotta share the different screen because I'm I'm sc I'm recording the other screen, so I gotta take. It's complicated being a a, a screen a streamer, isn't it? All right, so we got this in here. We're gonna cover the the infinity screen with this with this thing. Okay, perfect. Okay, so so ore rao sub yepe will be ore rao sub yepe would be you love us. But you're saying that it's your love of us. And why why is it that you're saying that it means your love of us? Based on this. Well, I didn't know it very well. <laughs> I might have said that. But uh, you love us. Yeah, that, that's that's most obvious. Yeah. So normally if we if, if, if we were to put the A at the end, um, then it, I, I guess it might mean something like that. Uh, but the fact that it has an A at the end that's not tonic tells you that this A is actually a part of the verb. So although it looks like Rao Sub, which is love, it's actually a different verb, which is very close to it. Uh, so let's jump into the Nyanga real quick and search for this Rao Suba. Um, okay, so we have, we got to take the R away when we search for it. Rao Suba is actually al subar it's hard to find that um but you can see here it is orera al suba right there orera al suba and actually right here is orera al suba yepe uh, ancieta poemas this is actually referencing the exact line that we're reading right now um so that exact line is is here as an example of saying uh to have pity to take to have mercy for to show mercy you know have pity on us. So that's what it's saying. Uh, uh, have pity on us. And so the reason is because in, in Tupi, um, Anchieta said that in Son Vicente, the Capitani of Son Vicente, this last R, if there was an R at the end of the verb, 
You could say it, or you could just, like a caipita says in Portuguese, just get rid of it. And that's, some people think that that's why people do that, you know? Uh, say, like, vou olhar, instead of vou olhar, right? It's, it might come from tupi, uh, because that was common in this territory where I live, in São Vicente, right? Up north, they didn't do that. They would always say the R. Uh, so it's interesting. So, so that's why, and that's where I guess Anshieta was writing from because he used that right here. So this is, uh, have mercy on us, Father. And then um, if we look at this now, the next line is, Pitanguin Paiesu. Let me see if I can just completely take that. I'm going to pop the picture and picture out. So what does Pitanguin mean? Does anyone have any guesses? Pitanga, Pitanguin. Words like that. Pitangin Payesu. Okay. So let's just do this. We'll do it line for line. Have mercy on us. Yeah, pitanga is children. Pitangin has the ing at the end, right? Like mirin, or like how Mineiro does uh, the demia, cafezin. Cafezin, right? Then you get your little one. So pitangin is neném. So it's not child, it's baby. Little little child, right? Baby. Neném. Baby. And then pai is like a, just a vocative way of, of saying like senor, right? Sir. It's a respectful thing to say before someone's name. That's all. Uh, so, pai yesu. Yesu is Jesus. So, baby Lord Jesus. Which is coincidentally my favorite Jesus. I love baby Jesus. Um, there's a lot of Jesuses. Just like in Hindu mythology, right? There's a lot of different incarnations of the gods. There's a lot of different Jesuses. There's even Korean Jesus. Um... So let's see, we got Toroiko Pabingatu. This one is a little bit uh, more tricky. So I taught you this, Gustavo. Um, when you see a T in front of a verb, uh, it basically means it's the permissive form. So it shows that you're, you're wanting something, right? You want something or you hope for something to happen. It's like a subjunctive form, but not exactly. Oro and then e so that means we toro iko estar toroiko we are here uh so not here necessarily we are and then opabingatu this just means everybody if, if you see opa opa in tupi that usually means like todos todas tudo Something like that. Everybody, everything, every. Um, and then benga tu is just like an intensifier. It, it actually, if, if you were to delete this, I think it would mean the same thing. Um, so he's basically saying, uh, may we all, uh, yeah, may we all. So this, this basically, may we all be in the sense of a star may we all be and then it says pupe. what might this mean Rekokatu? we can search it in the dictionary probably let's take a look Rekokatu. and so if we look at this we see de recocatu reanga and then a translation right here Imitando tua virtude, right? And so, based on process of elimination, we can say, okay, nde, I know that's tua, okay? And then, uh, anga, that must be the verb. So, recocatu must mean virtude, okay? So, tua virtude, tua boa vida, your, your nice way of living, the good way, as opposed to uh right the, the difficult way which is drinking a lot and eating humans and uh not wearing clothes you know the, the fun stuff but 
Uh, so if we go to reco, reco, um, we need to take away the, the R and you, you'll find echo can mean law. It can mean a custom. It can mean a rule. It can mean a culture, a condition, a fact. There's a lot of polysemia or polysemia. I don't know the word. É polysemica. Palavra polysemica. So it's like, uh, it has a lot of meanings, right? It's overloaded a lot. Look at that. Nine different dictionary entries. So in this sense, it's a little bit more uh, general. But if, if we're saying de, de cocatu, pupe, and we're talking to pai yesu, what do you think the translation might be? You want to try this one, Talu? Can I use the dictionary? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So we know nde okay. means uh, tua, right? And rekokatu means virtuji. So the only thing you got to look up is pupe. So I'll go ahead and go for you. There it is. So inside of. Yes, inside of. Or with. Inside of what? Uh, is it inside of someone? <laughs> <laughs> so in, in to be what we have are called post positions, not prepositions. So the, the post, so this word is referring to what came before it, not what comes after it. So pupe means inside of. So inside of what? Inside of your virtuji, inside of your good way, inside of your, your good Christian life, basically, is what he's saying. You're the way that you want us to be. So may we all be uh, inside of your goodness. I'll just write it like that. Your goodness. But it, it, it you know, also says with. Yeah, it could be I'm with. Like it could be yeah. with. It could be, you know, uh, in alignment with, uh, between. Um, these, it, this poupe can also have the sense with of like uh, an instrument, right? You're, I'm doing a verb with an instrument. So I could say like, a, u, u, I drink water. A u u gahafa pupe with the bottle of water. Gahafa pupe. There we go. Now I can say u ishe pupe. The water is inside of me, right? Because I just drank it. I can use the pupe with two different meanings in that sense. Um, so this one is, is a theoretical meaning, meaning with your goodness, yeah. We can put inside of or with. And so all together, uh, let's say it together. You don't have to unmute yourself, but Ore Rausuba Yepe Pitangin Pa Iesu Toroi Kopa Bengatu Derekokatu Pupe. Have mercy on us, baby Lord Jesus. May we all be inside of your goodness. That's what the first one says. Pretty good, huh? Not too crazy not too crazy now the next one we have pitanginamo pitanginamo ereko tupanamo eko bobe nasopotari mamo de puriguite kobonye it's a catchy one huh okay so pitanginamo we already uh, identified this word somebody tell me what pitangin means baby Baby, very good. So baby. And then it has this suffix namo. So this namo uh, basically is a nasal form of ramo, right? So because it ends in pitangin, the R becomes an N. That's all. So we got to go look up ramo in the dictionary and say, what does this suffix do? Okay, let's read it. So this suffix uh, has a nasal form called namo. And it means como or na condição G. Okay? So, if we say pitanginamo, what might that mean? If we were to translate like that. It has a baby? Yeah, like a baby. Like a baby. Ereiko. Iko is the same verb that we see here, which means this. Ereiko. So, my, what does ereiko mean? 
to be like yeah to be like a baby yeah and who is Ere? who is that who am i talking to second person second i'm talking to you right like yeah, like yeah. a baby you are you are like a baby you are pitangi namo ereko right like a baby i could say uh brasileiro ramo ereko you're like a brasileiro that's what someone might say to me you're like a brasileiro you're not actually <laughs> So, uh, if we go on to the next line, we have another one. Tupanamo ekobo be. Ekobo be. And so, this is an interesting construction, right? Tupanamo ekobo be. So, this namo is the same thing as this namo. And I'm sure you guys know, at least one of you knows what tupan means, right? Tupan, we say so much. So, what might that mean? God, like, like a god? Yeah, godlike. Yeah. Godlike. Godlike. Eikobo be. And so this Eikobo, we haven't learned yet, but this is a different mood. Gustavo, can you guess which mood this is? Have you learned about this yet? No, I haven't. All right, let's take uh, a look. I'll get, uh, that's uh, narrative. It's the uh, gerund form. So when you see a bow yeah. at the end of a verb, um, that verb is a gerund. So ekobo is the same. It's eko, it's that same verb, but this is in the gerund form. So we use the gerund form for a few different things in tupi. In this case, we have one sentence, right? Pitanginamo ereko, tupanamo ekobo be. Be uh, means, we can just look this up. It's very straightforward what be means. Be means ginovo or tambeng. In this context, it means tambeng, right? So be, if you say it at the end of something, it means tambeng as well. So godlike and then something something as well. So like a baby, you are godlike as well so this is the same verb so we use the gerund when we have two verbs in one sentence and we want to express that you're doing something simultaneously right you're being like a baby while also being like a god right so so it just means being like a baby you are godlike being as well right it's a kind of awkward translation but it might help you think about the gerund form a little bit um as a like an auxiliary form did I get this right, uh, Mateus? Do you have any comments about this? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, it's perfect. All right, let's continue then. Nasopotari uh, namo mamo. This is an interesting construction. This we also haven't seen yet. Um, this is how you negate a verb in tupi. So the verb here, I'll just tell you, is so. The verb so. What does so mean? So, a so. I'm going. Dance or run or. Hey, I know. I wasn't doing a great job. Uh, it means to go, uh, to leave, to, oh. just to go here, to go. So, so is the verb, right? And then we have aso. Aso means. Who remembers? I go. I go. There we go. I go is aso. Uh, now we move on to the next part. We have pota. Pota. Potari. What is potar? Potar. To want. To want. There we go. So we can put two verbs together. And now, so this one verb, this compound verb, so potar, means want to go. Right? My, my want to go. So Asopotar means I want to go or I wanted to go. Asopotar. Nasopotari is how you negate that. You put an N at the front and you put an I at the end. That's it. It's pretty easy. Nasopotari. Asopotar. Nasopotari. Asopotar. Nasopotari. I want to go. I don't want to go. So, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then mamon. Let's look up what mamon means. Unless you know already and you want to say. Um, so 
Mamon is how we say onji. Onji. It's like a question word. Mamon pe. Mamon pe. Where? Mamon pe ereiko. Where are you? Mamon pe ereiko. Where do you live? So uh, it means where, but it also can be an adverb or a place, right? Uh, so it could mean lugar. It could just mean a place. Onji. Like, like how in Portuguese you say, ah, não tem onde colocar garrafa no carro. It's like there is no where. It doesn't make sense when we say it in English. There is no where. Oh, it does actually. It's a compound word. Never mind. Nowhere. It means nowhere. <laughs> but we, you can't use it in the poly. You can't say like there is a where. You can't say there is a where. Tem onde sim. Right? You can't really do that in English. Maybe you can. Maybe I'm just not thinking hard enough. That sounds very poetic. <laughs> <laughs> but look, here, here we have an example. A so mamon. Vou pra fora. And this is exactly the line that we're looking at. So we can see the official translation. Now quero ir para longe. I don't want to go far. I don't want to go far away. Um, so yeah, Anchieta Poemas 100. So th this is the poem. This is the citation for what we're looking at right now. Anchieta Poemas 100. And so that means I don't want to go far. And then the next line says, De puri guitacobo nye. So, de puri. Let's start this off by looking up what puri means. Puri means close to, close to something. And it's a postposition, right? So we're going to put it after the thing that we're close to. So what does nepuri mean? What puri means? I well, forgot. Puri is close to. With close Please. to, with, okay. yeah. Na parte proxima, proxima de, ao pé de, perto de. So we got. So it's close to you. Close to you. Yeah, close to you. And then, uh, guita cobo is the same thing as a cobo, but it's in the first person. Gerund form verbs are kind of, they look like a monstrosity if you've never seen them before. They look like a Frankenstein. Uh, but but the <laughs> the the basically the teko is the same thing as iko but in like a noun form I guess and then and then the gui is the first person of the gerund and then the bo is just the gerund suffix so it means being uh, nye kuitekobo nye um, so let's just look up Guitecobo. I think, I think if you were to look this up, it actually has its own, like, yeah, because it's irregular, it, it says the first person, uh, singular of the gerund of Iko, Iko. So then you would have to go look up this verb to see that. But if you look it up, it does show up. And I wonder if they actually have this, uh, entire line inside of here. If Navajo put that. Guitecobo nye. Here it is. This exact line. De puri Guitecobo nye. Estando eu junto de ti, de ti. Uh, the nye. Nye. Uh, depressa com afeito, efetivamente. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which one this is. I think it's like this efetivamente. I think it's just, it just emphasizes things. Nye. I don't know. Nye. Do you have any insights on this, Nye, uh, Mateus? Mm, well, I guess it is one that means effectivamente, and sometimes it's not translated as Navajo said. Right. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's it. It doesn't have too much meaning, but it. Yeah. So being close to you. It's like the British, indeed. <laughs> Being me. That doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Indeed. Indubitably. Indubitably. All right. So this one, we've got this. I don't want to go far. Um, Depuri guitecobo nye. Close to you being me. That's an ugly translation. Who wants to do a better translation?
Alright, I'll sing this one now. Pitangina moereko, tupana moeko bobe, nasopotari mamo, le puriguite kobonye. So, like a baby you are, godlike being as well. I don't want to go far, close to you being is me. <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ubaka suye de yud. Who knows what ubaka is? This is a ubaka is a word that you see early on in Eduardo Navajo's book, so you should know this, Gustavo. God just forgot. <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time. You're a baka. Baka des. It means silt. Uh, in in the sense of the Christian paradise, sounds great. And look, here it is. Look, all of these. This song is so important. It's it's like the first entry for all of these different things. Yud, from 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 heaven you came. So yud is a irregular verb. Sui, sui is uh, g, basically in Portuguese of in English. It shows origin. It shows origin. So, ubaka sui, ubaka sui. I have a tendency of saying that as a semi vowel, but it's not. Ubaka sui, ubaka sui. I hate saying that word. Ubaka sui, from heaven. Ereyud, you came. So, from heaven you came. She anga pusuron sape. Um, so this is an interesting thing. She'anga. What does that mean? She'anga. My soul. Mia alma. My soul. She'anga. My soul. Pusuron sape. Pusuron means to save or to free. You came to free my soul. You came to save my soul. Pusuron. And so... Pusuro Aba or Pusuro Saba would be uh, right here. You can see it. Pusuro Aba. Tempo, lugar, modo, etc. G libertar, G salvar. Libertação, salvação. Okay? So it can mean li libertation. Libertation. Liberty. Liberation. There we go. The English is working now. Liberation. Uh, so Pusuro Sape. Basically, this pe is a is a suffix showing causality. So this would be written as sab, but when you have a pusiro sab, and then you put a pe at the end, saba, pusiro saba pe. In this in this sense, uh, instead of doing the y like this, you delete this, and then the b and the p can't touch because they're consonant. So you just delete the b. And the A becomes tonic. So, pusiron sape, it means for my liberation. For the liberation of my soul, rather. So, for the liberation of my soul. There we go. So, it's saying, from heaven you came for the liberation of my soul. With the intention of liberating my soul. Or with the purpose, rather, of liberating my soul. Engatu shepu ape. Engatu means uh, in. Basically, that just this means uh, you're in my heart. You stay in my heart. So shepu a, pu a means figadu, means liver. Pu a, figadu, but. Uh, the Tupi believe that's where the emotions were held. That's where the emotions were felt in the liver. So uh, we translate it as corazão or heart in English and Portuguese because that's where we believe the emotions come from. Even though we're all wrong, the emotions come from the brain and also the genitals. But uh, the heart and the liver have nothing to do with it most of the time. <laughs> but we still use it like that. Um, so, pe, this pe is just a locative. So, it's saying inside of the heart. So, she ape engatu. 
And let's just search this in the dictionary real quick. Ingatu. Ingatu. I don't think it even has it in the dictionary. So, uh, in. It's this verb. In tupi, uh, there's different verbs for estar. In, in, in Portuguese, you have estar deitado, estar em pé, estar uh, sentado, right? We have all these different verbs for estar. It, it, in tupi, it's one word, right? So we have in, we have uh, up, we have aiko, we have all kinds of different verbs. And so this one means to be without movement, right? To be to be still. So to be still. So basically it's saying be in my heart without movement. Basically saying don't not going anywhere. Like you're here and you're still. That's why he's using in instead of iko. Iko is a general estar. You can use it in any any situation. But in is more is more specific. So he's saying stay well in my heart, not going anywhere. Right, you stay in my heart. She yarin pa iesu. Yarin. This one is a good one. Uh, what does yara mean? Does anyone know? She yara. Yande yara. Yande yara tupang. Yande yara. Yara. Yara means senor, senora. So yarin. What might yarin mean? It's the diminutive of senor. So we have she yarin. My little sir. My little sir Jesus. Because he's a baby. We're still talking to baby Jesus. So cute. Ping. And then there's a bell at the end. So, Cheanga Mongaturomo. Cheanga, we already know, means my soul. Cheanga Mongaturomo. Not sure what that was. We got uh, my soul mongaturon. Let's look up this word. This word means to put into order, ahumar, right? To to fix up, to repair, to set in working condition. So mongaturon, she anga mongaturon. Look here, it is right here again in the dictionary. What a great example. Uh, to in order to put. In order to put uh, order on my soul, oops, in order to put order in my soul, why do I keep doing that? Okay. In order to give order to my soul. And then this one, Tupan Tuba de Mori. This is a circumstantial. Have you have you encountered this yet, Gustavo? Circumstantial form um, of a verb. Uh, this is the second indicative, indicative number two. Yeah. So this is Tupan is God. We already know that. Tuba with a capital is talking about uh, God, God, you know, God, the father. As opposed to Pitangin Paiesu is talking about baby God, baby Jesus God, right? Because it's like Hinduism. We got a lot of gods going on. So we got little baby Jesus God and we got uh, Sky Godfather. So now we're talking about Sky Godfather. So so Godfather, right? Godfather, not God's father, which would be, remember, Tuparuba, Tupanruba or Tupansuba. No, Tupanruba would be God's father. So in that sense, it would be talking about God as though it were Jesus's father, Tumpang Ruba, whereas Tumpang Tuba is talking about God father in general, God the father of everything. Very interesting, these, these uh, pluriform relationships. God father. And so this verb ur is the same as ere yur aki. Uh, here is ur. So that means to come. 
So ur aqui, with the mo in front of it, even though it has a b, means to make come, right? I made you come. So godfather, nde mouri. Uh, when you put a circumstance like this in front of a verb, and you have the third person, it's actually obligated to put it in this form, which I haven't taught you guys yet. But it doesn't change the meaning at all. It's just putting emphasis on the circumstance. So he's saying, in order to save my soul, in order to fix my soul, God Father sent you here. Or rather, made you come. Not here. He didn't say. Sent you here. Made you come. Right? So he's saying, God the Godfather, the Godfather, <laughs> he's the one that sent you down here to us. Uh, all right, we got uh, two more lines. We can finish it. Emunanamu, this is just like portanto. Uh, we can look it up real quick. This is just a conjunction. Assim, por isso, dessa maneira, portanto, emunanamu. It's a good way of starting a sentence after saying something else. Emunanamu, sheruri. Um, and so this is also ud. So this is saying my coming. So uh, because of this, uh, my coming, I came. Sheruri. Because of this, I came. Not my coming. This is also circumstantial. So I came. And then derese is uh Derece is, derece is also a postposition, right? So this is complementing this verb here that's also in the gerund form. So gui means me. Ye, the object, is self-referential. -refer so to myself. I to myself am doing this action. I to myself. And then pusuron, we've already seen higher up here. Pusuron means to save or to free. Um, to save myself. So I can save myself. Um, so I can save myself. Uh, so I came. That is say. Because of you. So that I can save myself. Um, and so the gerund form actually not only does it show simultaneous actions, but it can also be used to express uh, finality or the reason why you're doing something. Right. So he's saying, uh, you know, because of this, I came here with you in mind in order to save myself. So he's saying saving myself in a gerund form, but the translation would be in order to save myself because he's using the gerund with an intention of finality. So the total verse is She anga mungaturo mo tupantuba tupantuba ne mouri emunanamo sheruri nerese guiapusuro mo guiapusuro mo because so in order to give uh, order to my soul. Godfather sent you, baby Jesus. Because of this, I came with you in mind so that I can save myself. So that's the whole translation here. And I'll put it in the chat so that you guys can uh, can copy it. I think I sent it last time as well. Um, I'll stick it right here. Baka this. I heard that. Yeah, you heard that. <laughs> that was a while ago. Well, that's it. That's the lesson. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I've already taken up all of my hour of your time. Um, so if you don't have any questions, that's fine. But if you do have any questions, I'll stay for a few minutes and answer them. I'll have to go anyway, guys. So it's been good. Thank you for doing the, the it was like a review, immersive review. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. You also got to see things you never saw. I appreciate you coming. Uh, and I'll upload this, uh, I just uploaded the one from Friday now, which is like the same thing as this. So you could watch that one to get a different perspective if you want to like study it again because a lot of information in here. I'll All right. definitely do that. Well, have a great Thank night. Thank you. I know. Bye. All right. So you have no, no questions, see. Thanks for the class. Uh, I'll probably start uh, working on uh, that, that song I told. Uh, I wrote in Portuguese, so I'll, I'll start like translating to, to Pete. 
So probably I'll get something sweet. Hell for yeah. you to review next class. Yeah, you can send it into the CBP chat too. You can get other people to other people that hey. help you out with lyrics. They love doing that kind of stuff. People saying, I think I wrote this right, and then they love being like, actually. 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 <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful with yeah, that group because to have they're, they're a little bit toxic that. like that sometimes. <laughs> like they wanna make it extra perfect. It doesn't always have to be, but but it's still useful. Yeah. I, I've seen some people say stuff like I, I don't even believe what I see in the books anymore. Because they say, look, actually, this in the book is a wrong interpretation of that word that's like derived from this thing. It's all wrong when we don't know the answer. And I'm like, why the hell am I studying this? But it's so fun. But, but that's why it's fun, because you can actually make discoveries. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's the fun of it. Yeah. I, I'm still a little bit behind to make some discoveries in this. But hey, you uh, well, never know. You never know. Try to get that. Always go along <laughs> and stuff. I mean, I already went up to Navajo a couple of times with some things like, for example, in his dictionary, he says that Saba can have the R form in the present tense. And I've never seen that. Um, so I, uh, I doubt that that's possible. And I told him and he was like, no, it's possible. And I was like, OK, <laughs> All right, I'm not going to fight okay. you on this, but I don't believe it. So I, I even have my own things that just looking at the data that I've been like, I don't believe this, you know. <laughs> what, what will it do? It, it, it's, yeah, everyone has it's, their it's own religion. dialect of Tupi, right? That's the academic process. Is like acad academic people are always criticizing each other's works and being like, "Well." By the way, uh, talk, talking about academy, uh, I, I I've seen you got into USP. Yeah, oh, I did. That's not USP. I went to USP. I'm going to USP. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Yeah. yeah so so um. First, congratulations. Uh, second, uh, what is it in like? Is is it a graduation or post graduation? I, I don't know. Yeah, it's master's program. Master's. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a master program oh. uh, with USP. Yeah, it's really nice. Specifically focusing on what I'm doing with the coding library of of writing a grammar in Python. Okay, it's really nice. Yeah, good luck on that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I'll finish it before two years, but I've got two years to do it and also take classes. Yeah. So we'll see. I'm excited because I have no idea what to expect. I mean, this whole process has been like a, a new experience for me, you know, in a new country trying to do some stuff. I just did it because there's a guy in the group, uh, Tom Finbo, who reached out to me and he was like, hey, we're already trying to do a lot of the stuff you're doing. Do you want to come do a master's with us? And I was like, yeah. Might as well get some credit for what uh, all the work I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. But I yeah, doing this getting into Brazilian work. university will be like an experience. <laughs> good luck on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. We'll see how it is. So far, so good. Okay, so thanks. All right, yeah, now. Good night then. Night. See you later. Bye -bye. Ciao. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.